Hi guys, it's Hans. Welcome to this week 78 of the channel on Monday series. I'm gluing down some images. I have vintage images. I have a magazine image. I have a spread, uh, a page of an old uh, dictionary. And the point is I want to make several transfers on my spread. Now to do so, I'm using handy text, which is a glue, but you could use gesso to do to do this you could use um, gel medium there are several products or multimedium there are several products you could use to do so and once everything is glued to the paper I start ripping it back off again now some of the papers worked well the magazine image didn't come out well at all but as you know, doing transfers isn't an exact science and it certainly isn't my forte. But for today's spread, the image I have in my mind looks like um, an encaustique piece. Sorry, my brain just went blank. <laughs> um, and in the encaustique uh, art, there's a lot of layering and all the layers are, well, most of the layers are translucent and this is what I wanted to do for today's spread. Um, so I'm spraying some water and then rubbing my finger over the paper will take the excess paper away as much as possible. Once I'm done rubbing um, as much of the paper away as I can, I'm applying a layer of clear gesso because I want to protect these transfers from everything that could come on top of it. And this will be the first translucent layer of many more. Once this first layer is dried, I'm adding just a tiny bit gelato um, to connect everything together so that I don't have all those white spaces in between anymore. And then using my finger, I'm just blending the color. this is dry I can add a second layer of gesso and this time I'm using a card so that I will also have a bit of texture in my gesso. Now clear gesso is generally quite liquid so you won't have as much um, texture in it as you could have with a regular gesso. And once it's dried, I can go in with the third layer and this time I opted for Bindex. Bindex again is a kind of glue that I can use as a seal and it is quite liquid as well as is the clear gesso. I could have done this with gel medium, um, with multi multimedium, any kind of glue that I could have spread with a card and that would dry clear. I'm cleaning up an image I'd like to use. And this is just a Raban from Kaiser Craft. While you can enjoy watching this very complicated technique of 
rubbing down a rub on <laughs> I would like to tell you about um, a little something that I added to my blog um, from now on every week you will have the opportunity to vote on what you would like to see in the next channel on Monday video so if you go to my blog you can find the link underneath the video you'll see that at the top right of my blog there is a poll and so which um, element get the most vote will be used in the next channel Monday video. Now that can be a technique or a product or who knows. Um, also if you leave a comment um, here on the video or on my blog mentioning a product or a technique I might add that to one of the upcoming posts on my blog on my blog as well so like I said um, on my blog I couldn't make this any more your channel on Monday video than I'm doing now <laughs> so gluing my image down again I'm using the bindex and I'm also using it to secure the rub on And then again, I'm adding a layer of clear gesso because I would like the top layer to be absorbent and clear gesso is absorbent, which is not the case of uh, white gesso or of the bindex that I used. So if you want to do this, you have to think about what it is you would like to do on top of your layer. Here I wanted to add amongst other things um, distress ink so I needed an absorbent surface. This is Ecoline and I'm simply using a paintbrush to add some drops of it to my spread. Now this is a fun little toy, it's um, Cutter Bee Bugs and it, it actually is used to help you sewing because it makes little holes so you can have a neat line to sew on but I wanted to use it to add texture in all of my layers and then going in with some oil pastel I wanted to add just a tiny shade of color and as my oil pastel is sitting too much on top of everything I'm blending it using blending solution which you normally use for alcohol inks and this will help me to have just a shade of blue instead of a big blue line. And as I didn't have a lighter blue oil pastel, well, I'm using um, a gelato instead. There is no rules in what you should be using, just go with what you have. Now as I have been rubbing with a um, blending solution, I took the distress ink away, so I'm adding distress ink on top of it again. And as you can see, it's really just a blue shade. Adding some more texture with um, the color B. And I wanted to add another rub on on top of the photo I added, but this one had all kinds of little hearts at the end of the branches, so I'm cutting them all away so that I have a similar rub on as the two previous that I used.
this one didn't went down very easily because of the clear gesso so I had to be a bit rougher and go in with a very sharp uh, tool so that everything would stick down And then again securing it with some bindex. Taking my favorite stencil, which is the Finovar Bubbles, and then going in with some gesso using a piece of cut and dry. And as you can see, when I pick up new gesso, I don't go directly over the stencil. First, I dab down the excess gesso uh, on my craft sheet so that I don't have uh, big bubbles of paint um, on the stencil. Uh, I took out a couple of embellishments. Amongst those I have some Finovar Mechanicals and some home rusted other pieces of metal. Everything is rusted on this um, on this spread. Everything I use using is rusted. Then using my old pastels again I'm adding some color um, to the gesso. To start, I'm using a blue oil pastel and a white one to make it easier to blend uh, the blue on top of the gesso. As I don't have a blue that's light enough, I'm going back in with the gelato. And here I'm only using the white to blend the blue correctly. For these flowers, I'm just using a bread that I can um, stick through the paper. And this is a scrap piece of paper. I don't even know what brand it is anymore. That's how long I've had it. And at first I thought it might be a good idea to have my embellishments going horizontally, but you will see that later on. I changed my mind and I put them vertically. And then adding a piece of seven dot studio paper. picked my quote that I will be trimming to the right size so that I can use it and I'm preparing a second stack of papers to put underneath my quote I 
as you can see, the, the embellishments on the right side change direction. <laughs> and then I'm starting to glue everything down using matte accents. To help that piece of metal to stay where it should be, I'm adding a piece of 3D foam. When your glossy accents or your matte accents get clogged, don't cut the nip away because you will only add up, end up with a totally eaten away nib. You should um, take the clog out using um, a needle. Now I can cut my paper, my paper <laughs> in half. <laughs> and I can choose what kind of background I want. I can put it on craft paper or I can put it on white paper. And I decided that this one would be prettier on the white one. So I'm adding some more white accents on the spread itself. First with my Uniball Signo and then just with some um, gesso. These are the little hearts that you could see on my Instagram feed while I was making them. They're all, they are made of cold porcelain and painted with a lot of layers of paint and um, glaze. I'm adding a very thin metal wire around it to make it more interesting and then just gluing it down. I hope you liked today's video. I hope you will cast your vote on my blog for next week's technique or product you would like to see featured. Have a happy one. See you back next time. Ta-da!